great. Um, so we're loading up into the game now. Looks like we're not going to have the technical difficulties like we had in game one. Um, Toggy Toaster says, fuck Killiner online, because he's some kind of retard. I don't really know. Um, so this time, uh, we're going to have the Radiant Heroes. Um, so that's going to be Team Comcast on the Radiant, um, and that's going to be our Shadow Fiend, and that's going to be played by Mitsuki Kyoko this time. And on the Dire, we're going to have Taki Toaster. He's going to be on his Tinker. Tinker is his signature hero, um, but um, Natsuki Kyoko had, does have significantly more experience on the Shadow Fiend um, than he did on the Tinker in the last game, so this match should be relatively even, so we'll see how it goes. I really hate how long it like, takes to start at the very beginning here, because it doesn't like show you anything. In a normal game, what it shows you is it's like a captain's draft, so it shows all the bands here, mm -hmm. and then the picks, and it goes back and forth, and it's actually entertaining to watch, and here it's just like fucking nothing. I made all the stuff for Team Comcast, by the way. It has like a flag. You, you can see it in the game if you want. Nice. Like it's got a banner. All right. So All right. Welcome back, everybody. The game is starting. Down at the bottom, we do have Team Comcast with Natsuki Kiyoko. You can see their beautiful Comcast flags. They're waving in the wind. Up at the top, we've got Tinker, played by Taki Toaster. Now, the two uh, players have switched champions, and they will. Uh, we will now see who is the better of the both of them. I guess this is game two out of three. Uh, so if we do see Taki Toaster uh, winning this match. This will be the end of it. Talky Toaster there with the I heart you. Uh, All right. Good so luck, bro, from Natsuki, and I guess the game will get underway. I'm just going to quickly comment on their starting builds here. So we've got uh, Tinker. He's going for the laser level one. That's a good choice, especially against, uh, like I've said before, the heavy right click from Shadow Fiend. Um, and so this is Travis's style. He likes to go very heavy um, stats at the very beginning of the game and, uh, instead of regen. So he's going to get a late bottle if he decides to go bottle at all. Um, Travis is not the strongest at rune control. Normally he doesn't opt for it. So we'll see what he does. Looks like he's going to go check out the bottom rune. Um, whereas that's Kyoko here on the Shadow Fiend. He's going for, um, I think he's going to rush bottle. Uh, he has very low base damage compared to the Tinker. If you take a look, Tinker has 60 base damage, whereas Shadow Fiend only has 43. But Shadow Fiend can quickly make up through that for with Necromastery. So he's going to stay back to block. Shadow Fiend also has the added bonus of being extra spooky, giving uh, his opponents quite a scare as he moves into the battlefield. I know he gives me nightmares. It really, it's an out-of-game kind of metagame factor. Exactly. Um, it's actually incorporated into his Presence of the Dark Lord, and it just it doesn't say anything, but yeah, it terrifies the player playing it. Um, sorry, playing the enemy hero. Um, and they'll, make, they'll be more prone to make mistakes, and uh, they have a longer reaction time. So um, we're just going to start here. No last hits organized for either player right now. Now, this first creep wave is actually very important for Shadow Fiend. Um, oh, he's going to miss that one. Tinker going to get to deny. Um, but, okay. So this is not going very well for Natsuki Kyoko here, because he really needs to get these last hits if he's going to be buffing up his Necromastery. Uh, so looks Currently like with zero play. last hits and zero denies for the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, he's basically poor as an Ethiopian right now. No potatoes, not even in the dreams. That's a Latvian. They're not really quite the same race, but I can understand the confusion, because they are both poor and starving. <laughs> um, sorry, we got a little sidetracked there. So, Natsuki moving in to get some potatoes, while uh, our Iron Man in the crazy arms and the rockets, uh, he's pretty much got it under control. You can see he already owns at least one PlayStation 3, while Natsuki currently doesn't have any. He has zero PS3, so he can't feed himself, he can't feed his children. What's his wife going to say when he comes back home? But ultimately, a minute into the half of the game, and neither player really picking up any last hits or denies. Uh, this is definitely not good for Natsuki Kyoko. Um, but he's picked up two points in the Necromastery and one point in the Shadow Rays. So he's going for a more right-click heavy build as opposed to the Rays heavy build. Um, Taki Toaster picking up a, a two points into the Laser, um, one point into the Rocket. So he's just aiming to do a very high burst damage. So we'll see what happens there. Neither player picked up the Rune. Um, which spawned at O O, and a new one would have just spawned, but nobody picked up the old one. It's an illusion room on um, top lane. So looks like Shadow Fiend is just having a very rough time here. I mean, still two minutes into the game with only one last hit, uh, he's got very little gold, but he's going to find an illusion room. Now this is a godsend for him because the illusion room, if he times his attacks with all these, it's very hard to deny or uh, 
to deny him, as he has essentially... I don't, know, I don't want to do the math for it. The delusions do reduce damage, but basically he can zone out the tanker, and he can, he'll find it much easier to pick up these last hits. Although he's not actually doing it, he's going to take That's a lot of damage. That's who tried to gangbang top down. toaster, but it wasn't quite enough. He saw through the illusions, and there's just like one left Iron Man is just more powerful than uh, Satan this time. Yeah, it looks like Talky Toaster just not like to get gang raped. No, he's just definitely. It's like that scene. He's in the probably Shawshank more of a one-on-one -on -one you know? kind of person. I'd probably. Wait, say are you so. saying that he takes it in the butt so that he doesn't have to deal with their crap later? Yeah. What does he look like? I don't know. I he just feel like the Shawshank Redemption is a little more sad than this. Well, you can't see this guy's facial effect. <laughs> Fine, you get a better. You you come up with a better expression then. Analogy, whatever. Anyway, so um, Tinker's going to have picked up first blood here, so that's going to put Shadowfiend at a pretty significant disadvantage. Uh, he only has one soul, hitting for 50 damage, whereas Tinker is hitting for 68. So Tinker basically is controlling this matchup. He's going to have. This is Tinker's game to lose at this point. Looks like he's going to go for a Null Talisman. Now, Travis is known for going the double Null Talisman route, which is fucking retarded, but he does it all the time anyways. Um, so I don't know if that, how really that's going to work out for him. Looks like the Comcast gods just aren't quite giving Natsuki what he needs in this moment. His uh, kills on the creeps are still pretty low. EXP per minute falling behind Talkie Toaster. He's uh, actually, Talkie Toaster is progressing almost two times faster than Natsuki. If we look at their current gold, once, once again, uh, Talkie Toaster oh, in the lead. Oh, and Talkie Toaster going to hit with the rockets. So that's doing most of the Shadow Fiend's health here. The poor guy, he just does not have any just is not tanky at all. What's he going to do? Looks like he's going to try to farm up some of these creeps with the raises. He's going to try to get back into this game, which he can do through through very defensive laning and very, very... Uh, he's going to have to do some very careful play. Um, but he can get back into this game through his heavy right-click damage. And assuming that Taki Toaster does not go for the, uh, the Boots of Travel build, um, then he should be okay. And he, he, this game is not yet lost for him. It's just going to be very hard for him. So he's going to find a regen room. He's going to love that. It's going to let him spam out his abilities a little bit. Get him back to healthy range. He's not going to need to worry about uh, Tinker just killing him instantly. So Tinker now picking up a bottle and a null talisman. Uh, he got a decent amount more stuff than our Shadow Fiend does here. Well, it looks like they're just kind of skirting around each other. Um, neither of them are actually manly enough to try to fight one another. Um, it's feels a lot to me like watching a luchador wrestling ring, except both the players, or both the competitors, sorry, um, are monks sworn off of ever hurting another living soul. So they just kind of walk around each other and hug occasionally in the middle of the ring and the crowd goes wild. Sounds like my sex life. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Um, well, that was something I never wanted to hear. So, uh, Tinker and Shadowfin returning to their stalemate, the mid lane. Spooky face not making any attacks. There he goes with a bit of a poke, but it misses Talky Toaster. Just under overestimating the range a little bit on his uh, mid range shadow rays. Looks like this could be the end of the game right here. Actually, they're coming up towards the same room. They're going to try to fight over it. Okay, Shadowfin going in. Tinker going in. Let's see what's going to happen. Tinker's going to bully Shadowfin right the fuck away from that rune. Shadowfin is a bitch and he walks away. Um, so, Tinker is going to be the one asserting dominance in this room. So, he's got his. Uh, he's got his illusion rune right now, so he's pretty set. It's gonna let him get some more mana if he wants to spam out of his abilities. Shadow Fiend just sitting there, uh, level five, whereas Tinker is level seven. This is just a rough game for Shadow Fiend. He knows what it's like to be aimly penetrated, and this is it. Is that back to Shawshank Redemption? So, is that what we're talking about? Okay, here? That wasn't the Shawshank Redemption. I was just saying he knows what it's like to be aimly penetrated, like the player himself. Uh, oh, right, of course. Looks like Talkie Toaster just sitting behind the tower here, just waiting, um, waiting to go in. And he's just going to back up a little bit. Oh, and he's going to get tagged by the tower a few times. The catapult is going to chase him. I'm going to return to land. He's going to fire off some rockets. Those rockets have a massive range. Jesus Christ. Um, so Shadowfiend really not doing so well. He went Wraith Band. Um, 
got himself some tangos. Um, he's got a bottle, but he doesn't even have boots. And Tinker is just going to run him down. Tinker now picking up his boots of speed. Well, I don't know if he's going to go straight to a boots of travels. Um, we've yet to see. But yeah, so if you take a look at the last hits here, uh, it's actually... Well, okay, the denies are not even at all. Tinker with 11 denies, whereas uh, Shadow Fiend has only one deny. Um, but Tinker with only five more last hits than Shadow Fiend is not a significant amount, but Shadow Fiend is really just having a hard time. He's just having unable to approach the creep wave because Tinker can just spam off his rockets like that. And look at how much damage that does. Yeah, Stark Industries has really been doing a great job with their rockets there. As we know, they do develop weapons technology for the U.S. government and anyone willing to pay for them. But Shadow Fiend is actually, as we discussed earlier, Latvian. And he cannot afford the Stark Technologies rockets. So we can really see how this is quite a disadvantage for him and his economy. It's true. But you must uh, you underestimate um, the, true desper the true power that desperation brings him. You see, he really needs to feed his family. And he can't afford to do that. Um, if he doesn't win this matchup, the soldiers are going to take his daughter and they're not even going to give him a, ta a potato for it. They're probably just going to rape and kill her. So, I mean, it's a brutal life for this Latvian shadow fiend right we here. We can only hope that his name is Liam Neeson. <laughs> so what would that make Tinker? Like, the Pope? Uh, I don't yeah, know. I, I actually remember. haven't seen the yeah. Taken movies, so... You haven't? No. no. You just know the references? <laughs> They're pretty good. I would recommend. Oh, I don't know. I was the first. All one. I know is that he has a unique set of Anyways. skills. <laughs> Possibly his Q and his E. Q, W, and E. So it looks like Tinker's gonna come in here from behind. He's gonna go with the laser and the rockets. Shadow Fiend at 140 health. Looks like Tinker almost taken down here. T almost taking him down. Tinker's gonna tank up the tower though. Maybe a Shadow Fiend turned around, land some razors, but he's not going to. Tinker bottling up. He's gonna chase down. Doesn't have his boots yet, and Shadow Fiend is going to get away. So we're going to extend the game. A little bit longer. I'm but surprised they didn't take uh, Flash as their summoner spell. That would have ended the game right there. Really stupid. Why would you not? Well, even if you would have just used an Ignite or something like that. I mean, what? Yeah, that, that might have sealed it. But then again, if I were playing a 1v1, I would probably pick Trindamere just because he can go invincible. You know, and we'd probably also be playing uh, on some, on uh, not on Summoner's Rift. We'd be maybe on like a smaller map. Yeah, that, I can't remember what it's called either. The one lane. Proving Grounds, I think. Proving Grounds, that's anyways. the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, instead, we're just opting for Summoner's Rift here instead. Um, just because it looks prettier, mainly. Looks like an oil painting. So here we have Spooky Scary Skeletons moving back up into the river. He's uh, very far behind now. Check out his level versus uh, the Tinker here. Yeah, our Dwarf Friend. Looking at those levels there, it's got 9 versus 7. That's oh, quite a significant uh, gain on him. Now, this rocket is really killing him. I mean, he's kind of going for a pure DPS build, as far as I can tell. I'm not opting for any survivability outside of this magic wand. Um, now, he is actually picking up a magic wand recipe. Now, you may not know this, but the only difference between a magic stick and three iron branches and the magic wand is that the magic wand can serve to 25 charges, um, 15 health and mana each, and the magic stick can only char can only keep up to 10. But see, in a one versus one, it's unlikely that you'll ever actually reach that 15 charges amount, so it's better to just keep the stick, unless you really need to conserve your inventory space. Looks like Gimli's moving in for the attack, or is he? He's got the haste rune, so he's running around. Oh, he's gonna drop down his little Gimli men. But unfortunately, this is just not Helm's Deep, and Shadow Fiend... Wait, that doesn't even work, because in Helm's Deep, he was defending. Yeah, I'm not quite sure you're very well revised on your Lord of the Rings theory there. Not really, but I mean, we do have Sauron oh. walking around here, so... And they are protecting their up. towers. You know, I should have thought about that earlier. That could have led to some very good, like, Yeah, jokes. yeah, yeah, because, you know, it's, it's a missed it's, it's opportunity, the first two, really. It's the first of two towers. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. Um, so Tinker going to go check the room. Little does he know that Shadow Fiend already tried to check the room, but there was nothing there. Shadow Fiend taking up a large amount of damage there. Tinker with phase boots, actually. Just doing that so we can just catch up. Wait, hold on, oh, hold on. to go in. Looks like he's gonna go for the... 
Sorry for the soul, for the requiem of souls. He's going to try to escape here. He's charging up his bottle. Tinker's going to get try to uh, sorry, try, Tinker's going to try to nuke him down. But Tinker is out of mana. Shadow Fiend going to be healing up here. Tinker with a uh, Shadow Fiend actually right clicking pretty solidly there. But I do love Tinker's choice of boots here. I'm um, going for the oh me boots. too. The colors just perfectly complement his eyes. Yeah, and that skirt. Have you seen the skirt Tinker's wearing? Beautiful. Actually, I think that's his arms. Uh, no, no, he's definitely wearing a skirt if you zoom in. You gotta play the game zoomed in all the way. That way you can really approach Oh, I'm, I was zoomed in, so I missed a raise out there by Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend getting a <laughs> right click off on Tinker there. And uh, another raise. Looks like he could be coming back here, although Tinker is in a very good position. Shadow Fiend really needing to pick up some boots. Otherwise, Tinker's just going to be able to run him down with those face boots. If you don't know, face boots makes you run faster with this active ability, um, giving you... Plus 16% movement speed boost, so it's definitely not negligible. Oh, Tinker's going to be running it down here. Almost going for the laser, but not quite in range. Shadow Fiend's just going to back up. He's going to regen up. He's got... Uh, oh, he's going to get hit by the rockets. The rocket's really doing so much damage to him. I think maybe he needs to pick himself up a cloak of some sort just to add some more dam magic resistance because really he is being raped by these rockets. You know, Joel, if you look at the net worth graph, you're actually seeing that there is quite a difference between Tinker and uh, Shadow Fiend here. Yeah, if you take a look at that, that's almost a thousand right there. Shadow Fiend falling very far behind. And if we'll take a look at the XP graph here, over one and a half thousand for the Tinker. Shadow Fiend is really not in a good place here. He's just trying to hold on. He's going to hit hit by the rockets again. That's taking a massive chunk out of his health. There's just nothing he can do about this harass. Meanwhile, Tinker just controlling every single room. And he just got plenty of mana. He does not give a fuck. Looks like he is saving up for his Boots of Travels. And when he gets those travels, that's game for uh, Shadow Fiend. But really, does Tinker even need them at this point? He's so far ahead. I honestly can't answer that question because I don't know enough about this game. I haven't seen a match this one-sided since Stalingrad. <laughs> Indeed! So here we see Natsuki Kyoko taking a bit of a move back towards base. Uh, Taki Toaster making a move towards rune. He's gonna pick up a haste rune. Does... This now, uh... may be the game-ending rune right here. Because he'll just be able to run up right next to Shadow Fiend, maybe even be able to get a rearm off. He has not skilled rearm, actually, probably waiting for his boots of travels. He's going to go up and try to zone him off, firing out some rocks. He's not going to hit anything. He didn't have any vision. He was just taking a lucky guess. If he would have been right, though, that could have almost killed. Uh, you know, it's actually a very good strategy to always shoot around corners just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, just in case, if you shoot around the corners, you might get somebody. And I mean, that could be really good. It could be. <laughs> Fistful of Handicaps, brought to you by Daniel Back. <laughs> oh, he's going to dive the tower here. He's going to activate the haste room. What's he going to do there? He's just going to run past the tower. He tanked it up a little bit. Not really sure what he was intending on doing there. He did not throw off any abilities. Maybe he didn't have enough mana. No, he certainly did. He's going to walk back. Under the tower again. Oh, he's going to run back to the lane, firing off some rockets. And Shadow Fiend only going to take up with some damage there. Looks like neither player really being able to do any lasting impact to each other, but Shadow Fiend dropping some... He's buying some wards. Wards on the courier right now, as you can see. That was a flying courier. That thing is incredibly ugly. Jesus, look at that. Oh my god, somebody put it out of its misery. Looks like my sex life. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Empty eye sockets and everything? Jesus, dude, you're fucked up. Um, anyway, so Shadow Fiend's gonna pick up some wards. That's gonna let him get back into the room control a little bit so he can spam out some mana, be at a more comfortable level of health all the time. You know, stop Tinker from having just pure control. Pink Tinker trying to fire around some corners um, just in case, but he's not gonna manage to get it. Shadow Fiend going for the in invis rune. He's going to go invis before Tinker can nuke him down, so that was very lucky for him. If that would have been a regen, he may have been toast. Um, Shadow Fiend gonna walk up. Uh, not taking advantage of some visibility here, but honestly, he could have he could have landed a very good Requiem of Souls, but could he really have followed it up with very much? He's got very little to go with it, this right click, um, with only really very little, very little damage. Um, whereas Shadow Fiend here, oh sorry, um, Tinker here, actually their damage is pretty comparable, which is good for the Shadow Fiend. And he's gonna go for the Requiem of Souls right there. Um, but he had barely any slant. So he's gonna be nuked down by the laser and rocket combo, and that's going to be end of this game. Much faster than game 
number one. So that's going to be Taki Toaster winning our very first matchup of the Fistful of Handicaps tournament. So well played by him and also well played by Natsuki Kyoko. This is a double elimination tournament, so he's not out of this yet, and you'll see him again in the lower bracket. So uh, we'll come back to you with the next game. Just going to wait for the Ancient to get destroyed here so we can have an uh, official ending and the uh, cast doesn't get all cut off. But yeah, so it was very well played by both teams. What did you think? I was very impressed by how neither of them had any summoner abilities. You know, at least you could have taken a clairvoyance or something that could have helped you with some scouting around the map. Exactly. Uh, and neither of their SCVs were ever actually uh, optimized. They always had uh, more than... Uh, five guys on one stack and actually that's a waste of resources clearly what they should have done is made uh, their natural expo earlier in the game so that they could have gotten those resources and actually maintained their proper curve as they get to top out at five mana possibly around turn five so that they could cast uh, their big bombs and really seal the game to get that I, extra I 20 damage completely. through. I was very surprised that um the Shadow Fiend did not opt for a Zergling Rush, as I feel that would have helped very like a lot against Tinker's more late game oriented skill set. But anyways, that was um, match number one, game number two of Fistful of Handicaps, and thank you for watching.